right, now let's talk about revenue. So when economists analyze revenues, they don't really look at the short run versus the long run um, in the same way as they analyze costs and uh, production. They basically look at whether this firm is a price taker, meaning it's a firm that has zero control over price, or it's a firm that is a price maker, that has a firm that has some control over price or maybe full control over price. Now, a price taking firm, its total revenue curve will be a straight line from the origin. Okay, we know that total revenue equals price times quantity. So as quantity is increasing and price is constant, the total revenue curve will be a straight line from the origin. The marginal revenue and the average revenue will be equal to the price and will be a straight horizontal line. So that's pretty simple. This is what the total revenue and marginal revenue and average revenue curves look for a price taker. Remember, TR is equal to P multiplied by Q. AR is equal to the price. Why? Because AR is TR divided by Q and TR is P times Q. So average revenue is just another word for price. Marginal revenue is delta TR divided by delta quantity of output. Now, what about a price maker? For a price maker, the total revenue curve is increases. It, 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 it increases at a decreasing rate, reaches a maximum and then begins to decrease. And this is because of elasticity, okay? Um, remember, on a straight line demand curve, which is average revenue, remember the average revenue curve is really just the demand curve that the firm faces. We know that in the midpoint, um, PED is equal to zero. Demand is unit elastic. This is the point where MR, marginal revenue, is equal to um, zero and total revenue is maximized. So above the midpoint, total revenue is increasing as price is decreasing. So this means that demand must be elastic at high prices, while below the midpoint, marginal revenue becomes negative, which means that total revenue is decreasing as price is decreasing. And this means that below the midpoint, PED is less than one, demand is inelastic, okay? So remember the marginal revenue curve is twice as steep as the average revenue curve. And this is what TR, AR, and MR would look like for a price maker. The main difference is to remember that for a price maker, average revenue is higher than marginal revenue, unlike a price taker where average revenue and marginal revenue are equal. Now that we've covered production, costs, and revenue, it's time to talk about profits. So when we talk about profits, a business can earn a normal profit a business can make a loss or can earn an abnormal profit. So what is a normal profit? Basically, another name for normal profit is when the business is earning zero economic profit. Its total revenue is just enough to cover its total costs. Now, a lot of students get confused by this because if the business's total revenue is just enough to cover its total costs, how is it making a normal profit? Well, that's because total cost here includes both the explicit and the implicit costs. So the cost of the entrepreneur's time, the opportunity cost of the entrepreneur's time is already included in those implicit costs. There is already a normal profit that is included in the um, total cost here. So basically, a business is earning normal profit when it makes zero economic profit. A business makes a loss when its total revenue is less than its total cost. I think this makes sense. Um, a business earns an economic profit when its total revenue exceeds its total cost. It's earning abnormal profit. So there is already that normal profit, which is part of the implicit costs under total costs. And on top of that, it is earning an abnormal profit. This is very important to understand the difference between those three. So let's talk a little bit about the profit maximization rule. Um, economists would say that um, maximum profit is achieved at the level of output where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. This will differ if the firm is a price taker versus if it's a price maker. If the firm is a price taker, its marginal revenue, average revenue and price curve is a horizontal straight line, this one that I'm circling here. You've got the marginal cost curve. Where they intersect is this point here, the intersection of the red 
marginal revenue line and the blue marginal cost curve. You go down to the x-axis to reach Q star, the profit maximizing level of output. Q star is the profit maximizing level of output. Now from Q star, you can also find the level of average cost at that level of output. The difference between the price and the average cost multiplied by the quantity, this yellow um, uh, rectangle here, is the abnormal profit that this business is earning. Okay, When price is higher than average cost, the business is earning an abnormal profit. Now, for a price maker, um, you have the same marginal cost curve, the same average cost, and the same AVC curve. The only difference is the average revenue and the marginal revenue curves are split. Remember, marginal revenue is twice as steep as average revenue. So, the intersection of marginal revenue and average cost here will help us determine Q star, the profit maximizing level of output. Then you go up to get the average cost and the price. You have to get the price from the demand curve, from the average revenue curve. Okay. Now, whenever price is higher than average cost, the um, vertical distance is the profit per unit multiplied by Q star. This gives you the level of abnormal profit. So this is basically the profit maximization rule and applying it to um, a price maker or a price taker who is making a, an abnormal profit. Now, if the business is making a loss, P would be less than average cost. We'll see that in the next um, few slides. So um, the IB economic syllabus also requires students to understand um, two things, uh, the, the break-even point and the shutdown point. Remember, the shutdown point only applies in the short run, okay? So the break-even point happens where price is equal to average cost. If the price that the firm receives for its output is exactly enough to cover the average cost, the firm is said to break even. It is earning a normal profit where total revenue is equal to total cost. The shutdown point, as I said, only applies in the short run, and this happens when price is equal to average variable cost. So it is the portion of the average cost that is related to the um, uh, variable factors of production. If the firm is making a loss in the short run, remember the shutdown point helps the firm make decisions in the short run. If the firm is making a loss in the short run, if price is higher than the average variable cost, the firm will continue production. Even though it's making a loss, it's still earning more revenue to cover its variable costs and part of its fixed costs. So it should continue production in the short run. Um, if the price is less than the average variable cost or equal to the average variable cost, then the firm should shut down temporarily. It's actually cheaper for the firm to just shut down temporarily. Remember, the shutdown point only applies in the short run. I'm going to show this on a diagram in the next slide. So how does the break-even point and the shutdown point come into play? Well, basically, it helps firms make um, decisions in the short run and the long run. Okay, so here's a range of prices. Here is a firm that is a price taker. P over here is that green line. And I've deliberately made it flexible to move so you can understand what I'm trying to explain. So there are two basic prices. There's P1 right here, which is the break-even point. Okay. And there's P, which is the shutdown point in the short run. Now, any price above the break-even point, so any price higher than P1, this firm, which is a price taker, will be earning abnormal profit. Any price below the shutdown point, this firm will shut down in the short run. Any price between the break-even point and the shutdown point, the firm will be making a loss in the short run, but it will continue to operate because it's actually better for the firm to continue to operate in the short run rather than shut down. So remember, any price above P1, the firm will earn an abnormal profit. So if the price is here, um, the firm will earn an abnormal profit. Say the price in the market falls and this firm's a price taker, the price falls to here, the firm is still earning an abnormal profit. The price continues to fall until 
the price is exactly equal to the break-even point. Here, the firm is earning an abno sorry, a normal profit. It is breaking even. Now, what if the price continues to fall and the firm is making a loss? You know, if the price is here where the green line is. Well, in this case, the firm is making a loss because the price is lower than the break-even point, but the price it's receiving is still higher than the shutdown point. So the firm will continue to operate. Um, even though it's making a loss, because in the short run, that loss is better than shutting down and continuing to pay its fixed costs. Now, what if the price continues to fall until it reaches the shutdown point? Well, here, it's actually cheaper for the firm to shut down, because if the firm is continuing to operate, it's losing its fixed costs. It has to pay its fixed costs regardless. If the firm shuts down, it has to pay its fixed costs, so it might be cheaper to shut down. If if the price continues to fall any further, then the firm should definitely shut down in this case. Okay, so remember, any price above P1, the firm will earn an abnormal profit. Any price below P, below the shutdown point, the firm will be making a loss and it will shut down. Any price between P1 and P, the firm will be making a loss, but it will continue to operate because it's still better for the firm to continue operating rather than shut down and pay its fixed costs.